Under Armour out with results this morning. Initially, the stock went up. It reported a 40% drop in revenue from a year ago, but overall, that was better than what analysts were expected, thanks to strong online sales and better margins. The stock, however, is still down more than 40% for the year. Joining us now in a CNBC exclusive interview is Under Armour CEO, Patrick Chris. Patrick, thank you for being on with us just right. off that conference call. Thank you very much. So, so what I'm hearing is that the, the stock turned around after you talked a lot on the call about excess inventory and having to unload that in the back half of the year, which gets people thinking about promotions, of course, at a time where, where you're trying to revitalize the brand. What are you telling investors about that? Yeah, I think in general, we're taking a more conservative outlook on the back half of the year. We think there's a lot of uncertainty out there in terms of how the consumers ultimately are going to uh, navigate this, this near-term period of, of uh, the end of 2020. Um, so I think uh, that, that is really how, how things have uh, you know, evolved so far as we've seen this, this pandemic kind of roll across the world. And Consequently, we think that as we as we look into the future right now, uh, we feel that it's uh, the right thing to do is to take the conservative approach. So when you just talk us a little bit through the strategy when it comes to promotions and how and how you're thinking about the brands, when, once you unload that inventory in the back half, then what? How are you positioning Under Armour for this comeback into 2021? Yeah, I think a couple of different things. I think one of the things that we've seen as we enter into this year with our new brand platform through this together uh, is a strong resonance with our consumer. And ultimately, what we want to do is really get ready for 2021 and beyond. So as we don't know how the consumer will be navigating the back half of this year, how back to school is going to play out, and ultimately, for us, uh, it is the setup for the future. So, for, so, so thinking through how we then navigate the back half of of the year uh, through activation, um, I think it's really hard to predict, um, you know, the actual promotional cadence of what it will be. Uh, but we, we know for certain there will be some promotion going on. Uh, and and uh, we're just, as I said, taking the conservative approach. Uh, having said that, we're gonna continue to spend on the brand. We believe that fueling the brand is going to be important. We feel that we're now in a situation with, with, with our brand where we can do that. And so we're going to also uh, be spending uh, on this, this campaign that we have that through this together campaign for the remainder of the year as well. So I know most of the stores were closed through a good portion of the quarter. Now, now that they're reopened, what are the early signals telling you about traffic and consumers' willingness to spend? Consumer is, is there. They're certainly coming back, but they're still nowhere near to pre-COVID levels. There's hesitancy there. We have most of our stores open around the world, and we see similar trends, I would say, across the world in terms of what's happening. The consumer is out there shopping, uh, and when they do shop, conversion is better, uh, but the traffic is still uh, depressed compared to pre-COVID levels. So the question then becomes, what happens next? And, and we think that that kind of tentative approach from the consumer is, is going to stay. Uh, it's going to be a, a back end of the year with uh, demand variability uh, for sure. And uh, we have taken, we believe, all of the precautions to be able to navigate that landscape. How do you fix online? I know that that was a bright spot for you in the quarter. We just got blowout results, Patrick, last night from Apple and from Amazon. And it makes you wonder, do we even need stores right now as everybody has gone online? for shopping? Yeah, it's a great question. I think the way that we think about things is really about being consumer centric. So for us, it's all about how the consumer ultimately chooses to engage with us, how they prefer to experience the brand. And we think that there is an omni-channel case to be made where you have to have both full price stores as well as online. I think we're very excited right now about the launch of our new e-commerce platform. We went live two weeks ago. It's working incredibly well. And, and, uh, we think that in combination, a stronger e-commerce base and platform together with select full price store offerings around the world is the way for us to provide the consumer with the right experience from the brand going forward. You know, it, it was a transition going into the pandemic. You're obviously sort of taking advantage now to right size the business and, and set expectations. Just as far as the, the product, Patrick, you know, with Nike and Adidas and Lululemon, all, all doing really well and really resonant with consumers right now. 
how do you make Under Armour sexy again? How do you make it something that the kids want and, and that gets in the resale stores and all those things that are propelling people to pay premium prices for this kind of product? I, I believe we're on our way. We, we started this year, as I said, with our new campaign. We see higher engagement with our consumer happening right now. We talked on our call today around the fact that we just launched in the beginning of this year our most expensive running footwear ever with the Mackin at $150. It's been a great seller for us. And that's not the only thing that's selling. You know, we also have the apparel, run apparel that's working well in together with the Mackin shoe, as well as the activation, the engagement. You know, we've more than doubled the activation on our Map My Run app and also the connected footwear that comes with it. Uh, has increased about 150% year over year. So engagement is up, connectivity is up, product is resonating with the consumer. And what's really encouraging for us right now is how we see the women's uh, apparel uh, connect with the consumer, our training apparel for women through our infinity bras and our, and our um, Meridian leggings, for example. So we're not letting down on our uh, innovation. Our product launch is here for the back half of the year leading into 2021. And what you're seeing now is the consumer starting to resonate much more with, with Under Armour in those areas than, than we have perhaps in, in, in the last couple of years. So uh, this engagement with the consumer is incredibly important for us. The digitization to be able to do that is important for us. And we're starting to see things really come together and I go to market now in those aspects for the brand. Got it. Ne need to ask you uh, about a topic on investors' mind this week. You disclosed a Wells notice from the SEC. I know you disagree with any inappropriate action relating to pulling forward revenue from a few years ago. Kevin Plank was named. The CFO was named. Patrick, how should investors weigh this risk? What are your expectations here, that, that you'll settle with the SEC and pay a fine? I think, you know, we, we, we lay that out in our 8K, and I, I think that's uh, really all I can say about that at this point. All right, let's talk about but some other things in the news. You, you pulled out of the deal with UCLA uh, mm -hmm. earlier in the quarter, which, which might be a good decision because college basketball looks to be a, a tough thing to get going right now. Are we going to see more sponsorships from you getting pulled as you look to manage the costs and retrench a little bit? Ultimately, for us, it's all about the brand and the consumer and, and being focused on the consumer. So for us, it's about, you know, having the asset base that we can activate against uh, that actually matters for our consumer and, and ultimately makes our brand stronger. And as we've talked about previously, as part of the restructuring that we've been going through, the transformation we've been going through, we're going to be making sure we have the right assets uh, to be able to activate against because, one thing that's really important is when you do have an asset or an athlete, um, you need to be able to spend sufficiently against that uh, asset to be able to activate it and make it matter. And, and that's really what you're seeing with Under Armour right now is making sure we have the right assets that we can activate against to make our brand stronger and resonate better with the consumer. What about selling My Fitness Pal app? Can, can you confirm that that's part of the strategy? Can't confirm anything at this point. I'm sorry. What about the major athletes that you have? Is there mm -hmm. any, any, is that being uh, discussed as another place to sort of save and right size the business? I mean, you guys have some flashy big names and some big contracts there. Are any of them mm -hmm. on the chopping block? I think, you know, we're incredibly happy with, with the relationships that we have with our athletes. We, we are feeling for all the athletes right now in a big way, of course. You know, in this pandemic, it's incredibly difficult for the athletes. You know, they've been training hard. You just think about all the Olympians out there. And we have, of course, many uh, that, that were looking forward to being in the Olympics. Uh, all of the major sports that are now either on hold or delayed or, or you know, it's, it's, it's a moment of unknown for all of these athletes. So... The first thing we think about today is really trying to support our teams and our athletes the best we can at this moment in time. Uh, and, and that is really the, the number one priority we have right now uh, as, as we go into the back half of this year. How, how do you think about how much it takes off sales to have sports in such disarray right now? I mean, even at the NBA, Steph Curry's one of your biggest stars. He's not in the bubble. So, so how, how impactful is that for the business? Yeah, it's a great question. I think... You know, uh, one of the reasons why we are conservative right going into the back half of the year is, is we, we are uncertain of when things are going to happen and how they're going to happen and how they're going to be activated in the back half of the year. 
And because it's so much, uh, uh, you know, uncertainty around that, uh, it's it's really hard for us to predict what it actually means in terms of engagement from the consumer too. So I think for us right now, the, the job number one is to make sure that we stay the course with what we've laid out. Uh, we, we plan appropriately in terms of being conservative. We try to support our athletes, our teams, uh, and our relationships out there to the best of our ability. Uh, and I think that one of the things we tried to lay out during the call was, was how we thought about that as it relates to inventory, how it relates to the activation, trying to stay the course with trying to bring fresh product and innovations to the marketplace. But at the same time, you know, a bit of cautiousness as it relates to how the consumer will actually react out there, because the reality is we, we really don't know, right? It's a very, very much a variable at this point in time. Yeah, like a lot of companies out there. Well, Patrick, we appreciate you taking the time to talk us through it. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Patrick Frisk, CEO of Under Armour. Yeah, I was Carl, down about